brothers and sisters. So I just kind of felt led to talk about this um, this morning. Uh, as I've been traveling, we've been growing and we've been learning and we've been flowing. And there's just so many things that God has showed me. And one thing that I realized is that sometimes people don't even know that they need deliverance. Other times they don't realize that people around them need deliverance. You can be in a relationship and find yourself, you know, arguing with different people. Now watch this. It can be any kind of relationship. It could be relationships with people in the church. It could be a marriage. It could be a relationship with your parents, relationships with your children, relationships with coworkers, relationship with a boss. It could be anything. And here's the thing. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You could find yourself, you know, arguing or uh, getting upset or fighting and you're just like, man, what is going on? Or you find yourself in just, you know, some situations that just don't feel right or it feels just oppressive and it sometimes it might not even make sense to you. And you have to realize that that individual can have demonic influence in their life, demonic possession, demonic oppression, and you got to be able to identify. One of the ways that it um, always has been revealed to me is I can see it on their countenance, all right? It's like you can see in the spirit and you can see it on them. Other times the Lord would just speak to me. We had this um, incident when we were just in California and this woman came up to me and the way it usually works, I flow a lot in words of uh, knowledge. And so God will show me stuff about people. He'll show me stuff about their past. He'll show me stuff about their childhood. And really oftentimes what he's showing me is the root, okay, of what they're dealing with because the enemy the Bible says he's roaming the earth like a lion, seeking who he can devour. He's come to kill, still and destroy. The enemy is often watching and looking for a way to get in. One of the ways we let him in is sin. And you see this all the way back with Eve. He comes with the temptation or Samson, you know, comes with the Delilah. And you let the enemy come in and have intimacy with you, which results in sin. And then he has legal access to mess with you. So, you know, people be like, oh, Christians can't be. Um, demonically have uh, need uh, deliverance, right? They can't have that demonic influence in their life. They cover stuff. It's not true because you can have sin in your life, not just through fornication or adultery, you know, the sins that people think about, but you can be walking in a spirit of pride. You can be walking in a spirit of error. And because you're walking in that spirit of pride, the enemy can come with a spirit of religion. The enemy can come with different things and attach itself to you because you're open to it. And this is why the Bible says what? To take on the mind of Christ. If I take on the mind of the world, if I take on the mind of culture, if I take on the mind of my feelings, if I take on the mind of my family and the mind of my emotions, I can find myself being in a place where I'm open to generational curses. I'm open to demonic influence in my life. I'm open to strong delusions because I've allowed the enemy to have access through me. This is why we often talk about, you know, guard your eyes and guard your ears and be careful what you're listening to. Be careful what you're watching. Be careful who you hang around. You know, when you go to church and you hear the preacher, you're in receive mode, right? You open yourself up to receive from the preacher. When you go to the movie theater, you're sitting back there in the movie theater and you're kind of just open to whatever's coming through the screen they're downloading to you. And so it's the same thing. If you're walking through this life and you're not careful, you can sometimes cross over into the enemy's territory. Just like with Eve, right? He, he comes with the temptation and the temptation can come so many ways. He can tempt you to get in your feelings. He can tempt you to get in your flesh. He can tempt you to get an attitude. He can tempt you to get uh, you know angry. He can tempt you to even uh, submit to depression. And so what happens is when you leave the place of freedom in Christ, and you cross over into his ground, all right? Now he has access to mess with you. He has access to oppress you. And, and so you'll see this manifesting in different ways in people. One of the ways I've always seen it is how people react to the truth. The Bible says what? The truth will set you free. So if you give somebody the truth, all right? And I'm not saying that they just disagree with you, but there's like this aggressive want to fight it, want to resist it, all right? A lot of times you'll see people manifesting when they hear truth that they don't like. 
all right? Because the truth will liberate them from a certain mindset. The truth will liberate them from a certain perspective. But if they don't want to be liberated from that mindset or that perspective because it's an idol God, right? My perspective, the way I see it, it's an idol to me. And so your truth just shattered my idol. And so when they have this kind of reaction, there's oftentimes a demonic influence behind it because you're shattering their idols. And because they're worshiping these idols that they've built, they're worshiping these idols of their mind because they're exalting their mind over the mind of Christ. He says, lean not to your own understanding. Even if you think that you have a good idea or even if you think that it's justified the perspective that you have. For example, we talked about this today. If you're looking at anything from the lens of culture or a carnal, that's a carnal perspective, no matter what. Even if you feel justified, you say, this is my perspective as a white man. This is my perspective as a black man. This is my perspective as a poor person. This is my perspective as a divorced person. This is my perspective as an abused person. When you look through that perspective, it's still a carnal perspective. And this is what people don't understand because people always say, well, I want to feel what I feel and you need to understand me. This is what I feel. But you open yourself up to demonic things because you're walking according to what you feel. Satan made Eve feel that it was a good idea to eat the fruit. Samson felt like it was a good idea to lay with Delilah. And so when I follow my feelings, even if it feels justified, even if I feel like I'm right to do so, walking by feelings gives me, uh, gives the enemy legal access to mess with me. Walking by faith gives me legal access to see the supernatural. Oh, that's good. I got to say that again. God just gave me that just now. I'm going to, I'm going to post it. Walking by feelings gives the enemy legal access to mess with me, to manipulate me, to put um, strongholds in my life and walking by faith gives me legal access to walk and flow in the supernatural. So sometimes you have to stop arguing and messing with people. Jesus says some of these things only come out by fasting and praying. Here's the other thing about deliverance. I, you know, there's so much things that we learn wrong. So some people think deliverance is just, you pray for somebody and they start screaming and they start rolling on the floor and they start throwing up. Yes, I've seen that happen, but that's not the only deliverance because Jesus overcame Satan with the word of God. I've, and the Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke. I've seen people getting delivered through the word of God, through the anointing that destroys the yoke during preaching. All right. I've seen it like people want, you know, sometimes, you know, people be crying and stuff. And some people they have an emotional reaction, but other times it's because God is doing surgery. They hear the word of God and it's cutting down mindsets. They're getting delivered from mindsets. They're getting delivered from hurts and past and shame and condemnation because he whom the son is set free is free indeed. So when the word goes forth, they're getting liberated in their mind. They're getting liberated in their hearts and their perspective is literally being changed because I was feeling one way. But then when the word of God came up against my feelings, it shattered a perspective and when that perspective is shattered, I look at Goliath in a different light. When I have demonic possession and influence uh, in my life, it often causes me to look at Goliaths and problems and situations in a carnal way. When I'm liberated through the word of God, I look at things completely different. I see things through a different lens and a different perspective. This is why I watch the Bible says there's life and death in the power of the tongue. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But it also says the heart is desperately wicked. So to take this mind of Christ and let this mind be in you. So deliverance comes with liberation. The Lord is liberating you from walking by what you feel. He's liberating you from certain perspectives. He's liberating you from certain mindsets. And then, of course, demonic possession. Here's the issue. Sometimes... You know, with believers, they think, well, I'm baptized. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't have demonic influence in my life. Remember what we said. You can open yourself up to these things through sin, through the wrong mindsets. And then, like I said, the best one that I could use, right? People just automatically think fornication and adultery, then they think soul ties. But a spirit of pride 
can cause you to walk in a spirit of error, which can cause you to walk in a spirit of religion, and you need deliverance. And the worst possible thing that can happen is you think because I'm in church and I'm preaching or I'm teaching, or I don't need deliverance. False. Because when people think deliverance, they think rolling on the floor, throwing up, and they're so proud, they don't want to um, you know, think that they need that. But that's not how deliverance always comes. I've seen deliverance come just like that because the truth, the revelation illuminated their mind and they're like, whoa, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that might be an issue. For some of us, you know, it could be, you could see it in the way that you respond to your spouse. You can see it in the way that you respond to your children. You can see it in the way that you respond to the truth because truth is trying to come and liberate your mind, but you're fighting it and you're resisting it. And for some people, it's in, a, in an unusual way. They get angry when they hear the truth and then they feel this need. They become obsessive and they feel the need to just fight it and try to tear it down. They can't just let it go and let it be. Probably because there's some kind of demonic oppression. And then you often see this oftentimes with religious leaders who don't know they need the deliverance, they become manipulative. Anything that goes against the way that they flow and the way that they see it, if they can't see that they're walking in error, when other people are walking in liberty and freedom, they will try to manipulate and control that person or make that person feel like they're in error or they're wrong, when the truth of the matter is they need to be delivered from a spirit of religion. And so when you come with the truth, you, you'll see there's all kinds of excuses, you know, oh, well, like this and that and that and that. And, and they're not trying to hear the truth or they're trying to make excuses for their behavior because there can be a demonic oppression. Some of us, uh, we have struggled with, man, I'm just like my father. I'll give you an example, right? So I, I left my father at six years old, you know, and I didn't see him again until I was like 31, 32, something like that. And... When I started looking at my life, I said, man, this man has had no influence on my life after six years old, but I was seeing this pattern like me and his life was almost exactly the same. And you say, man, how is that possible? Because I've been completely separated from him, isolated from him because there's uh, generational curses. There's things even that the parents can open up the kids to. I'll give you an example, right? People say I was born gay. I say, you know what? You, need, you might have been born that way. You need to be born again. And you know why I say that? Because the Bible says, um, you know, two flesh become one. So when mom and daddy came together and they had sex, they became one with everything that they were one with. And they became one with everything that they had become one with before they became one together. Did you guys get me? Because I'm going to end the video after this. When two people come together, they become one. But they also become so everything she became one with before she met you and everything he became one with before he met her, they become one with all these things. So if you could look in the spirit, you'll see that unless there are two virgins behind each man and woman, there's lines and lines of, of people. Because guess what? Ladies, even if you say I've only slept with two guys or three guys, those two guys and three guys might have slept with 10, 15 women apiece. Or even more. And then those women have slept with a couple of guys. And then it goes on and on and on. So there's a line of things that have to be broken in the spirit. And so you don't know who people were sleeping around with. People can be on the down low. So people say, oh, I was born gay. There was a spirit afflicting that child from birth. Because your mama slept with your daddy and your daddy slept with somebody who was on the down low or you don't know what they were entertaining. So that spirit, even though it might not have manifested in them, it's been around. It's had access to operate. And this works with anything. One of the biggest things that I see is with, with religion is uh, Catholics. A lot of times, you know, those people are involved in a lot of witchcraft and, and Hispanic cultures and African cultures as well. A lot of witchcraft, um, you know what I'm saying? And down the generation, generation lines, Europeans, a lot of witchcraft and a lot of European um, nations. And so somewhere down the line, your grandma, your grandpa was messing with tarot cards. They was going to psychic shops and they opened themselves up to demonic influence and spirits. And so 
I've said all of this to say this, because this is one thing God has shown me and we're learning and we're growing. I don't claim to be no expert, but we're definitely stepping into it. We've definitely been casting out devils and I definitely can always identify when someone has some kind of demonic influence or possession or some kind of spirit that they're operating in knowingly or ignorantly. And so the first step is asking God to open your eyes so that you can see. Because then you'll stop wasting a lot of time arguing with people. You'll stop wasting a lot of time, you know, wondering like, why is this person doing me like this? And why is this person doing me like that? Because you realize there's a demonic force behind it. And so now I'm going to focus my energy on coming against that demonic stronghold instead of coming against the individual. Now I can look at that person with grace and love and realize it's not them. It's the demonic influence. It's demonic stronghold. And I'm going to come against that thing in Jesus' name. I'm going to come against the root so I can kill the fruit. Love you guys. Be blessed. Feel free to share this video. I'm uh, over here in the studio in Virginia recording God is Blessing. I never cried so much in worship off of one of my own songs. It's called Waves of Glory and um, Waves of Grace. And I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Um, so I'm getting ready to come to Texas this weekend. If you haven't checked out the book, and worlds go look it up on amazon i encourage you to let your people especially your young people read it if you're looking for a book to give them it's something that god gave me it's prophetic it's about the end times how to live in the end times um and it, it's just, just i think it'll be a real blessing um and then like i always say if you haven't listened to deeper waters listen to that before i go and put out heavenly places i love you guys I appreciate you guys. If you have a prayer request, please put it in the comments. If you want to request me, www.marcusrogersministries.org. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.